Hi guys, so for today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the dies that come with the uh, different sets that you might find on Local King Rubber Stamp. These are items that I purchased myself. Um, so this one happens to be an item that came out in 2017 and they're more like card fronts or like it'll be a whole focal point. It's a little bit larger. Um, I can measure it real quick because I know sometimes people want to know that. Uh, let's see. And that's particular for this one. Okay, so there's different ones. Some of them are more square shape or however. So, um, you know, if you're looking for this particular set, it's just shy of four inches deep and about three and three eighths wide or so. So, you know, good for like a standard A2 size card. Uh, but again, they all have some different measurements. Um, so this one happens to be 2017B4 Combo. And it's like the little uh, koi fish or little goldfish and the uh, uh, lily pads and stuff like that. Really pretty. So I want to show you with this one, um, the one die will cut and emboss. Okay, but we're going to talk about the different things you can do with that. And this one is 2019 FIN001D. And as you can see, maybe you can find it as the word flutter. Um, really pretty. So what happens here is that your dies, there are two of them. And the inside one will cut all the detail, plus it'll cut the edge if you want it to. And we're going to talk about that in a minute because it has a feature called a kiss cut feature. And then you have the outer die, so you can cut a shadow or you can cut the whole thing out. So you have this really delicate piece. Um, so we kind of went over that in a different video with the cheap friends. It's a little bit similar, but I want to show you guys how you can do your coloring, your embossing, maybe cutting, maybe make a frame, <laughs> how to use different ways. And then the other combos, like the newer ones from the end of last year, like this 2020 combo, the fuchsia. It's um, a little different, but similar to these, but you have your uh, embossing and fine cutting uh, inner die, and then the outer die does the shadow or whatever you want it to do. So to get started, um, let's see. I think what I'll do is I will use glossy paper for this one. And for this one, I'm just going to use regular cardstock. Um, well, not regular cardstock. This is stamping paper from Crafter's Companion. Uh, I just want to show you, I was kind of messing around with my magic mushrooms yesterday, and I did this card base. Look how pretty this came out. I got this from Lisa. She had um, done, like, um, Northern Lights kind of thing. And then on top of this, she put, like, a wolf or a coyote or something. So I have this ready to go, but look how pretty that is. So if you guys are interested in seeing how to make this background, um, check out her. I'll have the link in the description box. And, um, you know, I was just testing things out. I probably should have made it a little bit finer, a little more with curve, but hey, it looks really pretty right now. So I'm really happy with that. And look at the little stars. So really cute. Um, I'll use these markers. Uh, let me get some glossy paper and get this area cleared out so we can get started. Okay, guys, I was just here getting ready. I want to show you something that I just discovered, and this is going to be amazing, and I'll probably use it in the next video. Um, I have this scrap piece of Centura Pearl sitting here, the kind you get from Crafters Companion, double-sided and big kits, and I stamped it with the marker, and look at this. And you guys always ask Centura Pearl, like, if you can stamp with it or stamp on it because it kind of rubs away. Look at Oh my goodness. Oh, we are stamping with this, um, with the markers, because then it'll be shimmery behind there. That's going to be very interesting. All right. I'm really happy to have seen that or found that out. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is this one. I was trying to think how I want to do this because I do want to show you the different options, but <clears throat> I usually just try to take the, the cling thing here off of the, uh, the cling stamp off of the backing. And let me get a stamp positioner. And for this one, um, it should just stamp correctly the first time because um, on glossy paper, I'm going to use this glossy paper. I did pick this up on Local King. Um, there are different glossy papers. They are not all made alike. So I guess that's something you have to discover because I don't know everything about them. But... Um, what I want to do on this one is, you know, try to make it as straight as I can. I see there's different little areas and you kind of have an idea that the stamp itself is right in there. Because what I'm going to show you is if you wanted to leave this on your card base, you can do that. And then that is your card. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So let's move that over. Let's get that stuck on. And if you get any air bubbles back here, you can kind of see them in your stamp position and make sure to kind of release them because it'll make it almost impossible for you to stamp. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit closer. 
And another tip Lisa says, like, if you're coloring this and you see that the ink is repelling, um, to go ahead and just get a red rubber eraser, just a rubber eraser, like every little kid has on a pencil or whatever, and rub, rub, rub over the top. So I have a pencil here that has a very small one. I would use, like, the pink pearl or whatever. And to come in and just, okay? And that kind of helps get, if there's any reason that, you know, your stuff doesn't want to stick. I haven't had that issue, but I just want to show you. Okay. So I'm going to get my markers again, any watercolor or not watercolor, water based markers. I'm sure watercolor markers will work too, but they're going to be a lot softer, right? The effect they give. So I'm going to need black for sure. I'm going to need, let's say two shades of green to so those two. That's kind of brownie green. Um, the flowers, I always like pinks. So I'm going to go with uh, a really bright pink look. Butterfly can have some purples and maybe some blue in it too. I know there's a lot, but I don't need, I don't really need all these colors. I just want to make it a little extra. Okay. So we're going to start, um, oh, oh, I should make the butterfly like, uh, more monarchish. I saw what I think is a monarch butterfly yesterday flying around, but I thought, is it too early? No, it should be about right. I live in San Diego, so they should be coming through. Um, San Diego area. Okay, so I colored all that blue, the lighter blue. Then I'm going to come in with the darker blue and just kind of, you know, obviously the butterfly, so you kind of know where you want to, basically you just want to lay down color, but that's okay. And maybe add a little bit of purple back in here somewhere. I love purple. Gotta add it. That's the deeper purple. And I'll do the body in black in just a minute. Flowers, I want more of the pinks. So bright pink this the lighter pink is my base color there's like little buds here and again you don't have to be super careful but just keep your marker laid down so it's really um covering the whole stamp because if you kind of make lines you're going to see the lines so make sure this is just kind of laid down that looks like a leaf to me but i'm not sure so i'm just going to go ahead and color it pink and then i have the deeper pink i'm just going to kind of come in here in the center Maybe add some here and there. And then we need brown. Okay, actually, I do need brown for this the branch. And again, try to just get all that you can. It's not rocket science here. We're just getting that color down. And then I think I'll make the edge brown too, because that looks pretty. I like brown or black on the frame around here. I thought there were leaves. There are not too many leaves, but we can pretend to make some. I feel like this should be like down at the base here of the little flower. And then this one. And then darker green. The same areas. And black. I'll just make the little body black, which is very stark. You can go with something else. And now I just take the black and kind of dot it here and there in the flower. And I don't know if that just breaks up the color. It just makes it look, those little dots of black just help out the look. Okay. So I like to give it a huff, but you don't have to. I like go, just breathe on it. And at least it never does. She says you have plenty of time to work with it. You don't have to work fast. Um, it'll be three, five, you know, a little few more minutes than that to dry. And I like to really squish that down. The reason I'm using a stamp position, let's say you did this and you didn't like the way it came out, you need more color, then you can just lift it up, color it again, and put more. But that's pretty good. Hope you guys can see that. I mean, I'm happy with it. I could probably do the blue a little better, but that's all right. Okay. So now I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to show you what you can do with the dies. And I'm going to use my... Anna Griffin Empress because it's right next to me here and I like the the way that embosses better than like my Gemini. If people ask me questions about that stuff all the time, oh there's the brown. I was like I knew I pulled the brown out. Um, anyway, uh, that's kind of a hard question but for embossing I do like my Empress better. So we're going to take our dies and I'm going to try to walk you through a few different ways of using these so it might end up at the end look completely, <laughs> not destroyed, but just uh, something might, I'll, I'll talk about it in just a second. Hey, I'm trying to get these off the carrier. 
Okay, so first one. Now you can see I kind of put it in the middle of the card because let's say you just want this to be your card and you're gonna put this on a you know, standard A2 size card base or whatever. So we have that there. Um, we're gonna take our die. And her dies are cut, again, so fine and so nicely that you can pretty much just eyeball this, but if you wanna cut this on a scrap paper so that you kind of have a better idea where you're cutting, um, you know, use it as an aperture like I've shown you before, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put some tape but not too, too much, or kind of where it doesn't... Actually, let me take some of the tack off of this. I don't want it to rip this, because this is going to be part of our card, right? So all we're doing right now is going to emboss. I'm not going to cut all the way through. So I just want to show you what that looks like. Okay, so rubber embossing mat. Obviously cut side down on the paper. And our two sheets. And let me run this through. So this should really emboss and not cut all the way through. Very cool. As you can see, it's indented, but it's not cut. Now, if you wanted to cut this out first and then emboss, cut it out first and then do the embossing, okay? Don't do what I did, like emboss it and then cut it out, because that's not quite the steps you normally would take. I'm just trying to show you a different feature of how you can use these. So let me remove this tape very carefully because again, I want that to be my card base. And I'm gonna end up cutting this out just to show you, but um, that's about it. Let's see, ooh. So pretty, so hopefully you can see, oh, there's some tape still here. how that gives you the texture, but it's still in your card. So let's say you wanted that as a card front, you're good to go. If you use regular paper, or I guess even on this, you can blend around the edges to make it less stark, right? Um, here's another quick tip, and I think this is the prettiest thing to do. So let me grab um, a background stamp. I'll grab this uh, water reactive dye ink here in Sandstorm. Let me use that. I was trying to look for a quick drying ink and a light color, and I couldn't find one, so. I don't know if I have all the same colors. It should be all the same colors from Crafters Command because I have the whole set, but I probably just wasn't looking hard enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do is rub, rub, rub all around there. And we're going to take our card and put it down gently and just give it a rub, rub, rub. I'm not moving the paper. I'm just using my hands, obviously, to kind of... Look at that. So pretty. I feel like I missed this top line, so I'm going to try and see if I can get some extra words from like here, just to fill in that little gap. Yep, not bad. Look at that. So cool, right? Okay, so actually I'm gonna ink up another one and stamp it on um, regular paper. So I'll do that really quickly and that way we can try some of the other uh, effects with the uh, dyes. Hopefully you guys saw. I was just talking with y'all and uh, I realized my camera wasn't recording. Okay, well, let me do that again. All I did was show you that I had to stamp twice so that the um, the image would come out a lot nicer, a lot crisper, because it's on the stamping paper. It doesn't react the same as the glossy paper. But now I know since you're a pearl, it looks pretty good. We're going to definitely try that out. But let me put the, um, the inner 
die again. This time we are just going to cut. So I do have everything set up here. I have my metal uh, shim, my magnetic shim. I don't like cutting into my magnetic shim, so I'm facing it up. But if you wanted to cut into it, I guess you can get an emboss with that too. But let's go ahead and get this cut. And what I want to show you is that the kiss cut feature is what you're going to see on this inner die. So always, she said, don't remove your die until you know that it is completely cut through. I can see that it is completely cut through, so there should be no problem there. Again, with Anna Griffin, it's hard to get the dies off the magnetic mat because it actually is a magnetic mat. It actually works. So again, I look at the back and I can see everything's cut. Now, when I remove this die, what's going to happen is that, again, if you want to emboss this still, go ahead and run it through. Again, like I showed you the first time with the embossing, don't even remove it, run it through and let it emboss, okay? But I want to show you the different things that you can do with this. Or why you might be confused when you get yours and say, hey, um, because as you can see, it has an outer edge, but my paper is still in my card and the base, right? So she has what she calls a kiss cut feature, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and I've shown you other videos on different things, but look how cute. She always makes that so that there's something in here that you can kind of play with. Um, I think that's the, the one. This one's a little bit smaller. Um, you can probably do stuff with the butterflies. I don't know. She has little kiss cuts on those too, but I've never messed with that. Um, but as you can see, it's still in here. So let's say you have your card base, whatever your card base is. I don't know. Aye, let me see. Let's just pretend this is an A2 size card folded. You would put this in the front, and now you have the card color showing through, and that's your card front. Again, you can stamp those pretty background words or whatever you want. But let's say you don't want that, then it's easy enough just to see where the little tick marks are, where the that's holding it, that's the kiss cut feature. So you just go to it and pull it away. And pull it away. And you can use a scissor, I don't know, I just, I mean, I guess it depends on how many there are and how thick your paper is, right? This is some thick paper, but I'm able to pull it away. There's another one here. So it's a feature that's kind of nice because if you did want to use a die in this way and they're traditional dies, then you couldn't because it's going to cut it out completely. And then, I mean, you have to mount it up again, that's all. But with this one, now I can pull it out and I have this little feature I can use by itself. Okay, the other thing we could have done is leave it alone, just like right now with the kiss cut, leave it alone. And like, just like I showed you in the Cheap Friends video, you would leave it in there and then bring your shadow die, your outer edge die, and go ahead and cut that. And now you're gonna have an image that has a little bit of a white space around it that you can use, right? So it's going to cut this white space, and then the kiss cut is going to keep it together. So just like on my, my Cheap Friends card, it's not completely cut out, um, this part. And then you have a little extra on it, right, to use. So those are just different ways to use the dies. Again, you can cut this nice feature out, and then from another piece of paper, cut out this outer edge. And then you're going to have a piece that you can layer up that has the blue in the background, and then you can still put that on your card feature. So there's lots of different ways to play around with these dies. Um, so then the other one I'll show you, let me clean up a little bit right around here, is to do this little guy. He's very simple, and um, we'll get All right, right to guys, it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this guy. Basically, just go ahead and uh, ink up our uh, stamp here. And this one, you can think about what you want to do. It's basically going to cut with a kiss cut again, the feature, I believe. Let me see. Yeah. So if you want to cut this into your card front and just know what your card, you know, is going to be oriented or cut your paper down already. I just have a big piece of paper because I figured that's easier to work with. Um, and then just, you know, pay attention to your card, how you're going to ink it up. So I'll leave it like here. And again, once you get it down here, if there's any air bubbles, just kind of peel it away and kind of replace it nicely. And again, I'm just using regular cardstock because I know that's probably what most of you guys have. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So again, very easy. Just choose your colors. I think this is a green, right? Yeah. So I have a light and a dark green. Oh, you know what? Let's use a brighter green. Why not? And we have the little goldfish, so let's make them gold and red, and maybe some yellow. So maybe I'll start with the lighter color. And then a lot of greenery, so we have the green. 
and the flowers can be something really pretty. Um, let's go with purples. Okay, and you can start wherever you like. I'm not sure what this part is. Let me see about the cover. So that should be all green, this here. Hmm. I'll just make it purple. <laughs> since we like purple. So I'm going in with the lightest purple first. Lightest purple. This one looks like a flower too. And then this one here. And you can kind of see the way it kind of comes up here because this other part is a lily pad. So I'm just kind of looking at the design and trying to color it as best I can. No one's going to sit there and say, hey, that's actually part of the leaf, you know. Um, there's a little bud here. And I'm going to come up with my darker purple. Just add some color here and there. And she said, if you want to blend, you can always just come back and blend. I do see that there is some kind of like the center of the lily, uh, the flower or whatever you call it. It's like um, where the little seeds are. So I'm just going to color that part in with some green. We'll see what happens. And let's go with our bright green and color in most of the lily pad there. Again, try to keep it flat so you're putting color everywhere. It's better to put over color like where you don't need it, like on the flower or something, than not put color. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so there's some light green. I'll come in with some of the darker green. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is... How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are all doing well. Just adding some little green here and there. And I'll come out with the dark green. Just kind of highlighting that a little bit. Okay, there's that. And... There's some little spots here that are just like spots. I'm just going to color them blue just in case they're like water bubbles. And then our little goldfish. I'm pretty much going to color them all the same. I'm putting down yellow first. Lots of yellow. And then I'm going to come in with some orange. And some like reddish color. And then we're going to take our black, of course, right around the little eyes. And adding black here and there. And it looks like I missed their little fins. They have these little fins here. Okay, and the frame. You can see it's pulling up a little bit, so I probably should have done that little rubber stamp trick on this one. The rubber stamp, the uh, eraser. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that up. Yeah, so it was pulling up quite a bit, so I'm gonna stamp it again. As you can see, it's not like the greatest impression. So I'm going to wipe this down. Let me get, um, you know what? This is not what you're supposed to do, but I'm gonna wipe it just to make sure that black is off of there. And I'm gonna take my eraser. So if this was glossy paper, it would have been less noticeable, but since it's not, it's just gonna suck right into the paper. And um, that's what this does. So <laughs> let's go ahead and do that again. Again, as long as your paper doesn't move because you have your stamp positioner, you should be good to go. I just want to make sure I'm in all the spots there. All right, let's do it again. But this time, all you're going to do is the lighter colors. Um, I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do it again and you remember that you did yellow and or you know, that's up to you. But I'm just going to go ahead and just put the yellow down on my little 
and I can see that's much better already. So, I mean, if you don't want to stamp again and you just want to make sure, I would say go ahead and rubber erase oops, everything before you get started. Um, lighter purple is all in here. Down here. That probably should be green. <laughs> in here. She says whenever you do this, just go back with the lighter color of it. So, that's what I'm kind of doing. Just adding a little more um the light green oh yeah this is definitely sticking better so i can see and when i was doing this lily pad this large area that it was kind of pulling away so this is much better um you know these things okay and i missed this one Oh, uh, and the brown. So that's her recommendation is just go back in with only the lighter color. If you feel like you still, you know, want to add a little more or you missed a little something, go ahead and do that. But let me put the green in the center area too. Okay, let's make sure our paper didn't move. Give it a little huff. And stamp that again. Much better. Pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut this out. So let me trim this down. Let me clean off my stamp. What I do is I just wipe it with uh, a towel with like water because it's water-based, so it'll just come right away. Uh, I'll trim this down and then we'll cut it out. Okay, so I just trimmed this out and I just left the same amount of border just because I'm not sure exactly how I want to use it yet. So um, we're just gonna cut. And so this time what we're gonna do, we'll emboss and we'll cut, or cut and emboss. Um, that way we can see how both of those features work. And again, this has that kiss cut, so it'll stay in the image if that's what you want. Sorry, that little sticky stuff was still in there. Okay, so we're gonna look through here and again, line it up. And so I'm looking for the little eyes and where else I can kind of line this up. I can see the frame up here. Those eyes are perfectly dead center there. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. Like right there, oop, <laughs> like right there. Can you see all the little eyes and I don't see the black lines around them? I think that's gonna be good. So let's put it here. Oh yeah, it's kind of cute. Like right now this is gonna cut and I'm pretty sure it's gonna cut this area out. So there was a little watermark that I had made. So it's kind of gonna cut out, but if you wanna just use it as a scene, you have your little scene, right? So that's kind of cool. Okay, actually I'm gonna put two just in case. Let's put another piece of tape. Okay. Same cutting sandwich. I'm just gonna run it through and then we'll run it through with the embossing. And I did leave it a little extra just to show you if you wanted to cut it into a card front or just emboss it into a card front, just like we did this first one, you can do that too. You don't have to cut it out at all. Um, but as you can see, it looks pretty perfectly cut to me. I mean, I don't see anything that isn't cut. So now what we're going to do is, of course, this is the thing with anagriffins. I wish it was easier to switch out. Okay, we're going to take this one out. What happens is this thing cuts so deep anyway, it feels, it gets in there really nice. So there's not really a lot of fear that your die will fall out. If anything, your die will keep it. And uh, Lisa's trick on that is to rub a uh, dryer sheet over your your dies before you use them so that the paper removes a lot easier. All right, so then we have our little embossing. Hope you can see that. Can you see the texture on that? So I'm gonna gently remove this. Again, this has that kiss cut feature, so your paper is not gonna just remove around the edges from this stuff here. And that was pretty easy to remove. 
And look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so delicate. So again, kiss cut feature, if you want to trim that away, you can pull it away from your little outer frame or whatever your, or if that's the front of your card and you want to keep it that way. I do have one thing I wanted to show you. Oopsie. It's how I was thinking about using this one. Put it on top of your little river rocks. Maybe I would pop it up a little bit so there's some dimension between this and the river rocks. Again, I like shiny river rocks. So I probably would use, this is watercolor paper, but I probably would use the glossy paper. But look at that, so cute. So anyway, I just wanna show you a few different ways to use this. Again, if you look at the back, there are some fun features on this one. The Lotus pops up here and here and here and here. So this one has quite a bit. It's a little bit larger die down here too. So it just has a little more movement. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully that helped you out. I'll have the links for all these items. Like I said, I did pick these up items. I did pick these items up on my own, but the links will be there. The extra 5% discount will be there. Um, it expires May 15th. So depending on when you watch this video, that will be available or possibly not. Um, so thanks for watching guys. Really pretty, really lovely. And I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.